Absolutely. Jennifer, that begs the question, can you paint a picture of what real Jezebel activities look like? Yeah, they are many. You know, a lot of these Jezebelic characters, which I, I say they're people that are under the influence of a Jezebel spirit, they seem super spiritual. Like they come off as seasoned, very prophetic, seeing in the spirit, and it seems very impressive. The problem is they're tapping into the wrong spirit. Jezebel wants to cozy up next to the leader of a ministry, the leader of a family, the leader in a business and a club, uh, because the lead, here's what I've seen. Jezebel doesn't manifest in front of the leader. Jezebel doesn't show her true colors when they're in the presence of the leader. And so Jezebel serves the leader. And then when people come to the leader saying, this person has a Jezebel spirit, the leader is like, well, but they've been nothing but a blessing to me. They're, they're helping. They're doing admin work. They're cleaning the church. They're doing whatever. And so the spirit is very sneaky. It flies under the radar of leaders. That's why if you're the leader of a family, leader of a, a business, a ministry in particular, you need to trust the people around you. Amen. That spirit wants protection. That spirit wants power. It's a power hungry spirit. You saw that in uh, Kings where Jezebel usurped uh, Ahab's authority. That's she right. used his signet ring. It was illegitimate authority which is witchcraft. Jezebel wants to be seen, wants to be in the spotlight. Uh, we had a lady in our church one time and bless her heart, she was just hurt and wounded and we tried to get her free from this Jezebel spirit. And she just, nothing we did was working. I mean, she said she saw herself traveling with me and, and, and uh, prophesying in Spanish, translating all my messages. And she was always trying to get right up next to me and be seen as someone who was my right-hand person. And so they love the prestige. They want to prophesy. They want to teach. They undermine. They dominate. Uh, they're spies. They seek information. Be very careful because these ones with the Jezebel spirit, they seek information. They want to know your pain points so they can comfort you in your affliction and draw you close to them instead of you turning to Jesus. And wow. that's, that's a, wow. there's a lot more I could say, wow. but those are the keys right there. Wow. Come on. Those are important keys to watch out. Now I want to clarify this. The Jezebel spirit is equally as important for men as it is for women. You know, we have tended to, to heard this in the right. church pastor where they say, well, it's a Jezebel spirit. It's a female spirit. Yeah. It attacks the females. Mm -hmm. No, no. I have seen men operate Absolutely. heavier in the Jezebel spirit than I have seen yes. women operate yes. in the Jezebel spirit. So I got a question for her. Um, can the, it, does a Jezebel spirit always have to have an Ahab spirit in, to be involved? Mm. Is that something that, you know, has to be in operation? That's good. Yeah, I've heard that, but I haven't always experienced that. I do believe that that is often the case. But I'm very hesitant in spiritual realms to say always, because in our ministry, we've contended because we're a house of prayer and we have a prayer movement and a prophetic ministry. And so Jezebel's very attracted to what we do, but I've never seen the spirit of Ahab operating in our ministry. Uh, but the spirit of Jezebel comes around uh, time and time again. So I think that that is often true, but perhaps not always true. Well, the reason I said that is because there was many times that we would find the Jezebel spirit rising up in our leadership of wherever we were at. And I always repented personally. I don't want to be a Ahab, <laughs> you know, but Amen. it seemed to be a victim all the time, you know, of Jezebel working in the backgrounds and stuff. And I'm like, God, if I am a Ahab, I bind that in the name of Jesus, That's right. because I don't want to be a, a loose hole where the Jezebel spirit comes through and Amen. uses. Wow. And that's I a, that's think a that we word. need, as leadership, we need to be on guard ourselves. Yes. That's right. We yes. need to check ourselves that's all the right. time. Lord, is there anything that I'm doing that's out of that's line? Search and search my heart. Yes. Make sure that my heart is clean and open before you in every Amen. way. You know, one of the things I've realized the last 26 years is the Bible talks about it in Matthew chapter 7 that you should know them by their fruits. Wow, that's, right. that's good. How do you identify the spirit? The, especially people that use a lot of Christian vocabulary, they understand how to manipulate the conversation and they go into, oh God, and they, listen, God is not an emotional God where he moves out of emotion, he moves out of intention. His yes is yes and his no is no. He doesn't move on a maybe. 
But when you start understanding the fruit of the Spirit, you start understanding how to discern the people around you. Wow. I want to give you an, uh, uh, an insight. In the streets, we call that intuition, mm -hmm. street smarts. Mm -hmm. You learn how to move because there's a lot of people that come in as a counterfeit gang members and, and they're intruders, people that the, the DEA puts in, in process, the FBI informants and all that. So in the gang, you had to learn how to move and you learn who's willing to die and live for the neighborhood. There's a lot of Christians that are not willing to live and die for the gospel. Wow. Come on. Amen. I want to tell Lord. you that much. How do you know? The moment you put an instruction in the hands of the person that is saying that they are what they say they are, and you say, well, do it. That's right. Oh, no. That's how you know the difference between a real gang member and a false gang member is they put a gun in your hand and say, shoot them. <laughs> a gang member has no time to think. Either you shoot or you don't shoot. Hmm. The same way as a Christian. Either you're a full born again Christian yes. or you're not. That's I right. want to tell you something. I've seen a lot of people come around this ministry. Oh, God has called me here. God wants me to do this. And the moment a problem comes, they flee. They're the, they're the first gossipers. They're the, that you know so-and-so. That you No, 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 no. A, a real Christian doesn't get rattled by any come of that on. nonsense. Come on. I've seen it with my own eyes. I've seen Pastor Jim come against criticism and, and people get nervous. I've never seen him shaken. Instead, Amen. the first act that he provides is humility, goes in the back room and says, God, yes. I need you more Amen. than ever. God, yes, give me the wisdom. God, when everybody's talking about me, God, when everybody's walking away, when everything seems to stop, he's out there. He's in the back room asking for the Holy Spirit to guide him. Mm -hmm. He's not asking for a word from anybody. No, no. He's asking a word from the living God. Yes. That's right. Yeah. I want to tell you something. How do you know who's around you? Check them out by the fruit of the spirit. By their fruits, exactly. Wow, a, a lemon tree will not produce apples. There, you know, an apple that's tree it. will not produce lemons. You are simply producing the fruit of which your root is connected to, and we have to be connected. I know I sound like a broken record, but I will happily sound like one. You have to have an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. That is the only way that when a Jezebel spirit starts to buck up in your life, you can say, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! I need you to take a yeah. few steps back." Now, Jennifer, you say that the Jezebel spirit is preying on intercessors around the world. Can you explain that and why? Yes, and you know, I experienced this firsthand. I was shocked the first time it happened. We have a prayer movement called Awakening Prayer Hubs, and we're in 100 nations. And in the early days of the ministry, uh, we had a woman who came in, and she just seemed like she was on fire. And she was volunteering for this, and I'll do that, and I'll do the other thing, and please let me help you. And it was a breath of fresh air because when you're first building anything, you never have enough hands on deck. Well, Jezebel knows this, and so Jezebel will always look to serve in the area where nobody else is standing. So it's important to have people in the proper position because if people aren't in their proper position, Jezebel will take up that position. And so after a while, you know, I really began to trust this woman and she was a real blessing and everybody loved her. She was great. And then she started really manifesting with Jezebelic tendencies. She started drawing people in the prayer movement to herself. She started using my name and saying, well, Jennifer's told me to do this, this, and this, and it was all a lie. She started trying to get inroads into other major prayer ministries by sending a photo of me with her uh, to them saying that, you know, I recommended her, you know, to be part of these other major prayer ministries. All of it was a lie. And this was a, a a great concern when it came out. It was it was shocking. And then I started to realize there were breadcrumbs. She anytime you told her no, uh, she would get very hurt and begin to seem as if her feelings were hurt. That's one of the key ways that you can discern someone who's operating in a Jezebel spirit is when they come to you with their idea, their proposal, and you say no, and they'll get hurt. They'll get wounded. They'll say, you're just like the last pastor I served under. You're just like the last boss I had. And, and so these Jezebelic intercessors, what they're doing is they're, they're seeking information. They don't always know they're doing it. Many of them remember they're hurt and wounded, but they're seeking information and they'll actually pray against you. They'll actually pray what I call witchcraft prayers. Witchcraft prayers are prayers that are out of the will of God. They are based on man's desires, often uh, ill-informed or 
uh, nefarious desires. And these, the, we had to actually confront her uh, and ask her to leave the movement. It was the first time we'd ever have to do that. And when we asked her to leave the movement, she went on a rampage and made up all these lies about me and some of the other leaders and just tried to tear down what God had built. And so once I saw that, we had to put other protocols and programs in place to make sure uh, that we didn't let that happen again. And over the last seven years, we've probably seen it three times because we know what to look for. And anytime you have a prayer ministry, a prophetic ministry, you're going to find the spirit trying to get in. It's just, it's just the way it works. Wow. So what happens if uh, Jezebel has so much of a toehold on ministries, churches, uh, prayer ministries? What are we to do? Do we address it directly? Well, the first thing we do is pray. And we have to remember, we always have to remember that we must separate the principality from the personality. We must remember that this is a human being. This is a soul that God loves. This is someone who's probably been very hurt, very wounded. Many times they don't know what they're doing. They just want to be accepted. They've been rejected. Um, so you have to speak the truth in love. You have to go to them and say, you know, I I've seen some things recently that seem out of character for you. And are you okay? Is there anything I can do? Do you need prayer? And sometimes that'll cause them to open up and say, well, you know, when you rejected my idea, I felt rejected. And that can actually open the door for them to receive ministry, inner healing, deliverance, whatever they need. Um, but there comes a time, like with the woman that was in our church who wanted to travel with me in ministry, we had, we had confronted this with her five or six times. We had tried to get her healed. We tried to get her delivered. And she just kept on. And there came a day when I had to drive up to the church on a Saturday and meet her face to face as the leader of our church and say, listen, I'm so sorry. I, I, I'm going to have to ask you to leave this church. And I've only ever had to do that one time, but we had no choice. She was collecting the different numbers of different women in the church. She was holding midnight prayer calls that we didn't know about. She was doing deliverance on, on our members that we didn't know about. And she was essentially telling everybody in the church that I didn't care about them and that she was really their pastor. And she had usurped my authority behind, under my nose. Of course, I was traveling the nations, but she, was, she usurped my authority to such a degree. And we tried for so long to help her that we finally just had to say, I'm sorry, we're not able to bring you into freedom. Please find a place where you can go get free. And she just, she said, I agree. And she just left with, with no drama. It was amazing. 